There's a second type of splice we use to uh, uh, to join. If we have a damaged line, we can cut the damaged piece out, and now we have to rejoin the two ends. One way of doing that is to first remove any sharp objects from doing the splicing. <laughs> And um, we're going to feed this line through here and this line through here, and we're using two different colors to kind of indicate uh, which way we're going. So first of all, we're measuring three needle lengths inwards from the end of one of the lines. Two. Make sure you use the right size needle. Yes, three. Which is what? This is a 10-gauge needle for 800 and 500-pound line. For a 300-pound line, you would use a 18-gauge needle. You have several of those in your arsenal. Okay, now we have about three needle lengths inside. We're going to fold the line over like this. Now we're about six needle lengths back. We go a little bit behind it. Going to put a little kink in here because we want to go in here and come out here. Hmm. So this is what we're going to do. Insert the needle. If you don't like needles, you may have to ask somebody to do this for you. And I messed up, so come all the way out. It's a little harder with brand new line. Force, don't force the needle, just keep slowly pushing it. It will just guide itself. I'm kind of just pulling the needle through rather than pushing it. Just kind of grabbing this end. So we're going to come out at that intersection right here that we would marked earlier, all the way, grab the second end of the other line, flip the latch over, like this. Hmm. How much do you want to put on the end of it? Uh, I actually don't put that much normally, it's just, this is about right. If it's a fairly thick line, you want a little bit less in there because it's harder to pull through. At that point, just pull through. Come out the other end, all the way. So one line is through the other. You can see this, the red line is inside the white line at this point. Yeah. Now what we're gonna do is, we're gonna feed the white line into the red line. So we're gonna flip this around, or you can just walk around to the other side of the table. Now, we wanna tuck this all the way in here so we kinda line it up next to each other, go about half an inch behind it, Open it up and insert the needle again. Make sure the latch is back. Slowly, just kind of, I kind of just hold the needle with the back of my hand and just kind of pull it through. That's yeah, an easy one. I'm just good. It's a difference. Actually, it's not quite true. This is easy line to splice. So you go right to the intersection. If you don't make it all the way, that's okay. I'm intentionally coming out a bit short now to show you how to fix this later. So, came out about a quarter inch short, push everything out, grab the other end of the line. Again, have about a half inch sticking out, like this. Fold over the latch. You can see it right here now. And now pull this all the way through. Come out the other end. So I had a little bit of a gap, so this is not a good thing because the splice yeah. won't be good. So what you do is, you put this end, push it this way, you hold this end, you push it this way. Now you've gotten rid of any of the, uh, hmm. the gap in the splice, so you kind of clean it up a bit. Now you put your finger here, you work this end towards this direction, and you see, oops, didn't quite do it long enough. I'm going to work this end towards this end. And here now we have the problem that two of the lines are hanging out, but the splice is perfectly good at this point. One way to correct the situation is you could do two things. You can either go behind here, tuck this last piece in, you can go behind here and tuck this last piece in. Since we have a really good overlapping splice of three cable lengths, uh, needle lengths each, we don't need to do that. The easiest way to do it now is to 
pull this back a bit use a sharp tool, don't cut the line and kind of pull away from it when I say sharp tool I mean sharp so grabbing a dull well, that tool one. that is a dull one, yeah you can see it's just so I put my finger on there like this, you can see it so I cut about three-eighths of an inch on I hold it back in the middle here to make sure that the, it doesn't open up and now I feed it through and it disappears inside we do the same thing on the other end so first pull back a bit like this put your finger down, don't cut them off cut a piece off grab by the middle feed it through and hopefully we did just enough to make it disappear and now your spice is complete. If this was the same color line, I recommend adding a section of uh, color with a permanent mark or something where the splices overlap. And I'm going to demonstrate that. So, obviously, this line is attached to the winch. The winch. So you can kind of tension it. We take a permanent marker that is kind of a split in the middle. And I'll just mark this section right here. So as long as this section, this will fade over time, but as long as you don't see any original color in the middle of this section, you know the splice is holding up fine. What can happen, oops, I didn't color this section really well, but if you look at this and what could happen, let's say pretend over time this splice, splices are really holding up well if they're constantly under tension. If this is in a section that gets worked like this a lot, what can happen, the splice, uh, the splice over time can creep and it will look something like, this is going to be a bit difficult because we have to simulate failure. We're basically pulling, they're kind of pulling apart. Great. Maybe you would want to wait next time until it's dry. So. And I just did a good job. Ah, oh, there we go. So, I'm just going to simulate splice failure. So, if over time, you see the splice looking like this, it is high time to replace it. <laughs> so this gives you a good indication that it's pulling apart and the overlap is getting less and less at the ends and you just want to cut out this section and, uh, and redo your splice. This will not happen if the splice is under tension the whole time. It will not creep apart. But this is an easy way to mark to see whether your splice is holding up. If you don't do this and the lines are the same color, you won't be able to tell that the splice is actually pulling apart unless you actually see a physical gap like this. Sure. So it's just an easy way. If you see it like this, cut it out and replace it. This concludes the splicing. <laughs>